We don't have a lot of high yield features to use within this module. Much is accomplished through clinical presentation and associations between certain animals and professions are going to be useful clues in a patient's history. Of course, for the Ella sisters, we have a few microbes that, along with Klebsiella, will grow on buffered charcoal yeast extract. Sometimes, testing a patient's serum for antibodies or using specialized agglutination testing is preferred. However, these are fairly rare diseases, making such specialized questions pretty rare too. Of note, brucellosis is common with farmers and vets due to their contact with animal fluids. Giving birth, therefore coming into contact with the placenta, or milking cows are classical questions for this less common bug. Tularemia is associated with certain species of ticks, making any contact with wildlife a potential route of spread. Though pastorella is commonly found in the wetlands, this is an uncommon route of spread in industrialized nations. However, pets, especially those that come into contact with animals from high infection zones, are potential vectors for transmission. As previously discussed, Gardnerella is known for its fishy smell and gray discharge. This is characteristic of this bacterial vaginosis. These symptoms are due to the change in vaginal pH due to the bacterial overgrowth. On microscopic exam, a clue cell is pathognomonic for this infection. Bartonella can be cultured and sometimes even seen on a regular blood smear. PCR may also be used, such as if a tissue sample is taken. It is more likely to be seen in those with lowered immune systems, such as AIDS patients or the homeless. Echinella cordons can be grown on culture, though it grows slowly. This typical fight-bite bug should be treated for if someone was recently in a fistfight or bitten by a human. Due to difficult culturing, treating before endocarditis becomes a concern is proper protocol if this bug is suspected. Coxiella has sometimes also been classified under the Rickettsiaceae family with the other Rickettsia genus. Serology for antibody levels has been traditionally used, though immunofluorescent and PCR techniques are also becoming more readily available. Again, the clinical history is going to give us the clues here. Contact with animals is almost mandated to be asked in a question stem in order to separate this from other similar presentations. And for a quick review of past modules, here are some flowcharts to help you more easily visualize the relationship between certain organisms from past modules. There are many ways in which flowcharts can start. Perhaps you start with gram staining or with a test of a particular enzyme. To test your own knowledge, make a flowchart or two and see if you can accurately categorize the bacteria that we have covered so far. You may image search for some ideas as well, or simply screenshot these images. This chart might help you to categorize the multitude of microbes that have been covered in the past few modules. Of course, this is just one way to organize the material. Have some fun and create your own. Thinking through the process will greatly improve your long-term retention. Here's another example of a gram-positive bacteria flowchart from a broad view. This gives a great overview of the general categories without getting into the nitty-gritty details. We could always add more detail, becoming infinitely more complex. Here's one with more detail on just the gram-positive cocci. You can get as broad or narrow as you want when thinking about how to construct these flowcharts. Some software also allows you to add images, different text colors, and other features to make it more close to an actual mind map. Remember to be an active learner and participate in the discussions and activities. These can help memory as well as mastery of the subject material. If you've been enjoying this material so far, head over to the website at freemeded.org. There we have many more recommendations and resources that may help you in your educational journey. Also, to improve on future work, please feel free to share any constructive thoughts on the comments section or via our website contact form.